She's April. And she's Molly. And we are... (laughs) A mess. The book besties. Just need a little jingling. We're, well, we're seven minutes in. Maybe we should do what we're fucking here for. You know, rivet, rivet. Uh oh, uh oh, shit. Okay, we should get back to this. What the fuck? Are you new here? Are you new here? Trigger warning there's prison rape, there's rape in general, there, there's sexual assault. If these are triggering for you, please join us in another episode. <laughs> oh, Molly Snort! Yes! I was wondering which of us was going to be the first to do that on pod. You know it's a hard thing to get it from me. So. <laughs> I'm normally the snorter. And I'm usually the mess. You're knocking shit over before. It's like me over there. <laughs> Molly, it has been a motherfucking week. Okay? Girl, I know. Yours is much harder than mine. But I know, dude. Yeah, so I work at a public library as the children's librarian. And, and I, she's seven days straight this week, y'all. Right. So my it's library stinks. is open on Sundays. And this is the first library system where I've worked that we're open on Sundays that everyone had to work Sundays because I've worked at one before. It's a long story. It doesn't matter. But um, when it's your Saturday and Sunday, you work Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm-hmm. You get off the Thursday and Friday before you do that seven day stretch. And I made the stupid mistake of scheduling myself three programs on my seven day stretch. So I had story time on Wednesday. I had a program on Thursday. I have another program on Friday. And I said to my boss, I was like, why did I do this during my seven day stretch? She's like, because you're in probation period and you're trying to be impressive. And I was like, actually, (laughs) actually I'm, I'm pretty impressive without that. So facts like you're what pretty are you impressive. doing to your camera I'm turning we- lights down i'm sorry i'm really bright girl okay. girl we are filming like this is going to be posted <laughs> to youtube <laughs> what the fuck are you new here are you new here says the girl that toppled her microphone over her trying to do it look <laughs> look we did not ha- we did not have intro on at that point <laughs> oh it's gonna be a great episode um, oh, let's man. see. My week. Uh-huh. Well, I woke up to a fraud email this morning from Wait, PayPal. A fraud? I thought you said frog. I was like, what's a frog email? <laughs> you know, rivet, rivet. I was like, just, I just, thought maybe it was some sort of like. It's just, it's just, it's just heavy pictures of frogs. You know. I thought it was maybe like a new. Them. I thought it was maybe like, like a new term of like spam. I didn't. I don't know. Okay. So what fraud, fraud. email? PayPal said somebody tried accessing my account in the middle of the night. Your PayPal account? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I get on PayPal and I see that there's a charge for $4 to Sephora. I was like, that's weird. I haven't ordered from Sephora in a while. My makeup stash is solid. Also, what the fuck can you buy at Sephora for $4? Like, Um, you could buy a walk in the store? It's those, it's, um, those, uh, she ordered, the person pretending to be me on Sephora ordered uh, those cotton rounds, like those wide ones, like a pack of those, and then proceeded to use all 1,800 of my points. First of all, how the fuck do you have 1,800 points saved? I've been saving a while. Clearly. Because I've been, because every uh, (laughs) December they do big giveaways in the points Mm -hmm. and like their experiences with like makeup artists and stuff. So you get to like learn. It's a class. So I've been saving up to enter those drawings. Oh, yeah. Because once those drawings are filled they're filled that's it so i'm like right. i'm gonna save up i'm gonna get it she was spending 100 points here 100 points there 1800 points you can get the good shit for 1800 points yeah you can she's I gonna bet- be really sad when all her samples don't come in the mail because i canceled the order i bet that she was he or she whatever i bet yeah. this the person i'm assuming somebody's stealing my makeup's a woman fake fake molly fake um, molly in michigan Fake Molly the address. was probably trying to sell the stuff secondhand, like yeah. buy probably. it and, and then sell it. Probably. I have their address though. So I could always do something with that, I guess. It's not they a PO their, box? Nope. They put their home mailing address. Well, Molly, turn them in. Yeah, I should. 
Oh, I don't know why you're questioning that. You absolutely should. <sighs> Semi related. Your eyes look amazing today. Like that. Thanks. That like the, the mm. bronze. Thank you. Yeah, but also like the the what the hell eyeliner looks good. Oh, on, the on brown. Today. Thank you. I Thank went to you. the chiropractor today, and so I have dark circles under my eyes where my makeup was like, hmm, mm, I belong here now. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, but they push you on the table and everything smears. And yeah. I love going to the chiropractor. Though. Oh, no. My chiropractor is awesome. And today they're she They're like did... my favorite place. They're like one of my favorite. My chiropractor is one of my favorite places. She did a, a different hip uh, maneuver today because mm -hmm. I have the problems that are mostly with my hips. And she did. The Barbie a... hip. Yeah. She... I, 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 right. am, I am. It's Barbie right. hip. Yeah. So she did a different. Um, chiropractic move today and she was like just so mm -hmm. you know I need you to be like really relaxed because I can actually hurt myself doing yeah. this to you and I was like okay I'll try and I was so relaxed I almost fell off the table <laughs> what did she do did she do a leg pull um no I like when they do that but this one felt so good that I was like can we just do that like every time so she took my leg I put my uh -huh. knee up and she yeah. bent my leg so to see what the range of motion. Oh, would she be. twisted you, and you, she had you cross your arms like this. Mm -hmm. I and, love that. I also and, love and when my, you... it just like slid right into place, and like yeah. I was just like, oh, this is what you're supposed to feel like normally. Yeah. My uh, my other favorite, if I can't do that one all the time because of my back, mm -hmm. but my old Cairo in Texas would make a fist. And put it between my shoulders mm -hmm. and then bear hug me and mm -hmm. push the fist in between my shoulders and it would just and yeah. my ribs and my back in that section would just all go back into place it, yeah it was the best feeling in the world yeah they're really good at this uh at this chiropractor it's a man and a woman and like the man is more gentle mm -hmm. and the woman is more rough but i definitely feel like i'm better adjusted when she does it than when he does yeah. it my um, my last. I, hour, I often need now. to. Yeah, I often need to do ice after because she is mm -hmm. so rough. But I, I, it lasts longer when she does it than when he does yeah. it. Yeah, it, it, it's a miracle. Okay, like, well, the body. We're we're, we're seven about... minutes in. Maybe we should do what we're <laughs> okay. This fucking here for. <laughs> this week we are talking about Karen Slaughter's book Triptych. Mm -hmm. Is it Karen or Kareen? We, Karen. We, okay. Karen. I did all the double checking. I Googled and all that. It is Karen. She says it in early interviews as Kareen and now more modern interviews. She says Karen. So I am well, going to go. If I had a it. choice, I would say Kareen because Karen is not the name you want anymore. No, but <laughs> so I was going to start with a synopsis and that's generally what we do around here. Yeah, it is like the thing I do, right? Um, <laughs> We're going to get through this episode. Um, it's a short synopsis today. Because <laughs> this is a odd book. I don't know why you have a short synopsis for such a long book, but okay, let's go ahead. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. Two cousins, one a convicted criminal, the other a cop with a great record. But the past has come back calling, and it's the job of Will Trent to figure out who is the real criminal. With a ton of violence, death, and sex in this story, the story unfolds slowly in, in unique ways. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I don't know that I would say sex is the right term. There's like one sex scene, but the rest is rape. Yeah, rape. Like lots Sexual and assault. lots of... There's lots of assaults and rape. Lots and, and lots of prison rape scenes. There's prison rape. Okay, so trigger warning. There's prison rape. There's rape in general there there's sexual assault if these are triggering for you please join us in another episode cool <laughs> cool thanks let's get in this so <laughs> i don't i'm in a weird spot today it's been i that email threw me off i'm telling you i've been out of sorts today they called my name three times at pt today mm. and i was sitting in a chair looking at him and he called my name three times Mm. same physical therapist I've been going to for a month. I have difficulty realizing that they're calling my name because I'm most often listening to an audiobook. So, Oh no, I was there full clear headed Molly, just clearly not clear headed. Zone out. <laughs> clearly ADH not zone clear out, headed. you know, just like gone in the world. And that's been my week. Like I can't get out of ADHD zone out. It's been rough. Mm. So this is your first Karen Slaughter book. Mm -hmm. 
Um, before we talk about the story, I want to hear how you felt about her storytelling style, her use of the characters in telling the story, and what you thought about her writing in general. Okay, so for those of you who are new to our pod, this genre is not something I enjoy. No. Um, no, this is a Molly, Molly book genre. Molly enjoys a wide range of books. April enjoys dystopian YA literature and contemporary adult romance. <laughs> Speaking of, I am in the middle of the new book, the first book of our guest coming up. Oh and my gosh. Damn, Kendra. I cannot I, wait. I cannot finish. I, I, I'm going to finish the series already. And we have stupid pod books. Stupid pod books, dude. Listen, stop calling our pod books stupid. <laughs> Not when I want to read other books, though. I know. It's hard. The struggle is real. We, so we take two weeks off, so you can... We do take two weeks You off. can read it then. I, I'll blow through them then. Okay, I, can't, so, I can't wait to meet with her next week, though, because I'm, I know, I'm in it. Good. All it's, right, it's so not back not to good. Karen Slaughter. So this is not... This author, not that author. <laughs> this is not my genre. With that no. said... I think her writing is really good. I really liked the progressive take on this. I really liked the uh, bait and switch that, like, mm-hmm. the cop is, like, he, first of all, I thought the person that he was banging at the beginning of the book was a grown adult. Yes! Not a teenager. Because because it was from his point of view. Michael right. skewed that from you because he's an unreliable narrator. He's an and, unreliable narrator, 100%. Yes. And I know and, you and love an unreliable narrator. I love an unreliable narrator, but I also love how she snuck that in. Right? Yes. Because so I was very learn- confused. I was like, wait a minute. This is her dad that's gone all the time? Like, I thought it was her husband. Like, Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they're just, we were using, he was just using names. Right. And you just make the assumption, you know. I yeah. also, for some reason, assumed that they were in an apartment building and not in like but it was a neighborhood. Not houses, nice but it was houses, like, but it was like extremely nice neighbor. houses in like the suburbs. Yeah, neighbor. yeah. Um, so yeah. I really liked the way that the story like unfolds and it's told in basically three parts, like a triptych, right? So right. Um, I think it was really interesting. I frequently am not surprised, but. When it was starting to become obvious that um, that Woody was the same person as the was, was Michael Orwood, yeah, right. When that was becoming more obvious, I was like, "Oh, that's really fucking clever," because yeah. I was like, "Why? Why does John know have like such an indication of who has stolen his identity? Like, why is he certain?" He that had a gut person? feeling from the beginning, yeah. And he was right, but you never mm-hmm. like, like, and I know you gave this away in the um, synopsis that they're cousins, but you don't really know that until like much later in the book. Right. So, so for me, her way of storytelling and weaving the story together was amazing. Now well, and it's three different voices. We get mm-hmm. Will's voice. We, get, we actually get four voices. Four. Cause we get Angie too, right? Angie. Mm-hmm. We get Angie, we get Will, we get John and we get. Uh, Michael. We even right. get we get the villain's voice in this, and right. I'm like, and she does that in all of her books. Mm. Okay, I won't say all of them. It's most of her books, you do get a viewpoint of the villain or from the villain, or one of like one of the books mm-hmm. is the point of view is from one of the girls that have been kidnapped and taken mm. to the woods and be, in like in like they're in the shed under these wood like planks, oh. and her whole. Like her whole perspective the whole time is just these planks, mm. so and we jump back with her. It's really sort of like, interesting. That sort of like reminds me of the movie or the book, The Room. Yeah, or Room. Um, room, and they make it. A, they made that a movie, and then also the Lovely Bones. But she's a ghost yeah. when she's telling the story. Yeah. Um. Th- with all of that said, this book reminded me a lot of like early law and order like that really like that grit well, that you, like this was early 2000s yeah but i'm thinking like 90s law and order um oh, okay with like the grit in the like the tough well, cops in brooklyn she's been, and she's been publishing since the mid 90s i think well, her first publication date's 94 i mean i'm not criticizing i'll double that, check it i'm not criticizing that part of it but i am critical only because it was disturbing to me and not because I didn't think it was well written. 
the violence, the gratuitous violence in this, the images of of John it's very being very much raped. SVU. It's very SVU. It's very Law and Order SVU. Yeah, but the the I mean, there was literally I cannot get this sentence out of my head. Like, there's literally a, a sentence in the book that's like he's John sitting across from his mom, and he's embarrassed of the fact that he, and I quote, still has the taste of his. Uh, of his own shit and other men's cum in the back of his mouth. That was so disturbing to me. And he was a child then. I know. He was still a child. And I th- I did this one as an audio book and like I, it turned my stomach. I'm in the car and I'm like, I think I might vomit. Um, mm-hmm. And so like. I'm sorry that, for that. That and the image um, when at the end when Angie is like pushed down the stairs and like all that glass and everything. Yeah. It's like gratuitous violence that like I'm not here for that. But no. um, but the writing is amazing. Like she really yeah. did paint a picture she for me. She fills the picture out like Yeah, like I good. I could I could picture these things even when I didn't want to. Do, so Right. Yeah. Um, so this is the first Will Trent this is the first book in the Will Trent series. Mm-hmm. Readers have met him in another series, but this is your first introduction to this character in yeah. his saga. Right. Um, what do you think of Will as a main character? Well, first, I have to tell everybody, I texted Molly on more than one occasion while I was listening to this book, and I was like, how is this a book, the first book in his series, when he's not even the main character? <laughs> like, you have I to- I kept going, you'll see. I mean, you have to get a few <laughs> chapters in, like, maybe more like yeah. halfway through the book before he actually really becomes the main character. Um, because you have to be involved in the storyline. She really gets you involved right. in the storyline and rooting- <laughs> For someone, right? Right. You want this resolution and you need a hero. And who is she going to give you? Will Trent. Will Trent. Um, (laughs) So I think, like, I like the idea that he's like um, a a kid who grew up in the system. And so he's got some problems and, you know, he's socially awkward. Um, I I love the spin that he's dyslexic. I know we're going to talk about that more later. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I I like him as a character. I just don't care enough about him to keep reading more of his books. That um, makes sense. And that could be because this is not my genre and because of how gratuitous the violence was in the book. But I, to me, I don't feel like this book did enough to establish him as like the lead of a series. Right. But I do know he, this, his, this series... Her series about Will Trent is so wildly, wildly popular. Like we get asked yeah. for them a lot at the library. Um, I had a former coworker who like dressed up as Will Trent from Halloween. Like she's obsessed with the series. Like that's um, amazing. Like, yeah, I mean, so I I get it. Like I I, I think know it's like fifteen following. books deep now. Yeah. Fifteen, something like that. It's yeah. wild. It's so I mean, big. I mean, it's just like it's just like the Rizzoli and Isles series, right? So yeah. when we read the Bone Garden last year during spooky season, they appear in that book. And I was like, mm, that still didn't inspire. And I liked that book a lot. I, that yeah. didn't inspire me to read any more of their books. I, but I never liked Rizzoli and Isles. Mm-hmm. I, I like Bone Gardens and I like her writing style there, but I could never get into their yeah. series. Well, they, it, it just didn't transition for me. It's also like um, the show Bones. I love yeah. that show, which is weird. I love Bones. Like speaking of gratuitous violence, but um, but I loved that show a lot. But I have no desire to read any of those books. None. No. None. That's okay. That's okay. Look, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I want sunshine and rainbows, or the entire world is bur- burning down, and we need a teenage girl to rise up and save the day. That's all I want. This is. The world's kind of apart. I mean, this is no. too realistic, though. That is stuff that could really motherfucking happen, Molly. That's true. Um, <laughs> out of all of Will's issues and struggles in his life. Wait, did I skip something? Oh, did you think Will's a good detective? Like, did you think, like, he did there his were, job right? There were some things that I was like, I feel like he should have figured this out by now. Yeah. Like, He's I definitely like a, a traditional Southern slow moseying detective. And right? I don't know. And I don't. Oh, by the way, the narrator for the audiobook gave, gave everybody like a deep Southern accent. You're in Atlanta. <laughs> That's it not what people so in Atlanta funny. sound like. He um, definitely was pushing the 
old Southern detective right, heart right. lying heart. Now, yeah. Now I do think um, I do think he's a decent detective. I think he's a detective that cares, and yeah. that is more important. I think than like I don't know, but he's a character. I he's a, he's a detective you would root for. Like right, you know, Will is, but I think Will's, and I, I know this because I've read all of the books. Mm-hmm. But Will is trying to fix these people because he can't fix himself, right? He mm-hmm. thinks if he fixes enough of the fixings, <coughs> you know, it's like Christina Yang and Hearts. Mm-hmm. She thinks if she fixes enough Hearts, she'll bring her dad back from the death, mm-hmm. right? That right. that. It, it, it's the it's the same thing. It, right. It's, I mean, and Meredith. It's a broken bird. So. It's it's a broken bird thing. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, Piper Addison just watched the shooting episode. Hmm. Listen, I can't watch the episode when I'm home alone because nope. I've worked in schools and like. Hmm. She was very upset, as you could imagine. I would like, say so. That um, she loves all of the like, and her her. M-F-E-O is Callie in Arizona. Like, their couple goals to her. She calls them the states. Oh, the she, states cannot be separated. They they are perfect together. She's going to be she, real sad in a few seasons. Yeah. When Arizona I, bangs someone I else. Know, I know. It's going to be bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. We should get back to this. We should get back to this. Okay. Um. So, since we're talking about Will... Will has a ton of issues mm-hmm. we've learned um, that that have he's struggles his life is a struggle period yeah he think he's mostly he's ashamed of slash embarrassed of his dyslexia um, what do you think of this being like a major plot point for him as a detective I he thought uses, that was sorry go ahead he uses a system of folders so he can color system for the folders. Um, Angie read to him through college and high school. Mm-hmm. Um, he got his degree online for his doctorate. The man has a doctorate for Pete's sake. And he uses the tape recorder all the time so that he can pay attention and keep notes. Do we know that he has a doctorate in this book? I thought he just yeah. went to college. I didn't Yeah, he was he was talking because Amanda kept calling him doctor. Dr. Oh, Trent, right. Dr. Trent, because he oh, fitted, right. like, and he went to some weird college in Florida just to, like, screw with Amanda for some reason. And Oh, right. He, I, really I remember now he's, he, I remember now he told her he was hoping that he would be educated enough to be out of her pay grade. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the dyslexia, I think, was really smart. Um, I love a neurodivergent character. I love it because, you know, I have a neurodivergent son and a neurodivergent best friend. And so um, (laughs) um, I love it. (laughs) And it's exhausting. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, probably for you, it's not exhausting for me, but it kind of is. It's like watching a monkey loose at the circus. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) Um. I thought that was really creative. I liked that he had a way, a coping mechanism. Like he had figured out a way to still be able to do his job and to do it well. Um, I'm pissed that Angie told his boss about the tape recorder because then he got in trouble for it. I mean, I know that like was a flashback thing, but like. um, Angie was being a bitch. Yeah. Well, she's got issues. Um, Angie has her own issues. Yeah. I, I like that he that he had to work at it. You know, I like that yeah. there was a whole, like he just, nothing has ever come easy to him. No. And I like that, you know, part of the reason why John isn't discovered as, as maybe connecting to this until later in the story is because Will needs more time to read the files, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, his struggle actually helped John keep his ass covered, you know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and I mean, Literally, because he wasn't being raped in prison anymore. Word. Um, True crime, crime isn't your genre. No, it is not. (laughs) Like, at all. Not Um, at all. (laughs) What did you think of the story? Like, the nuts and bolts of it. I I mean, we have a hero, we have a villain, an Mm -hmm. unlikely villain, we have an unreliable narrator, we have a hooker. I mean, an unlikely hero, too. I mean, right. John's kind of a hero in the end. Yeah. So what did you think? Um, I, this book is not for me, Molly, but right. it was really well written and I can appreciate anything that's really well written. 
Right. Um, like I said, the gratuitous like violence in it was just not my thing. But uh, funny that I can read three books, four books really, about teenagers killing each other, and I'm like, yeah, cool. But this book, but it, I was it's like, not mm-hmm. as graphic. Yeah. I, I, it's not as graphic, yeah. and you know, like. This does turn my stomach. There are scenes mm-hmm. in these books that really do upset my stomach. But the way she unfolds a story mm-hmm. and we start in like, we don't even know Michael's the villain. Oh, right? I know. He's the very first main character we're introduced to. Right. Like, the we, book starts from his point of view. We, we, we think, so. I mean, we know what we're going to talk about him. Let's just, um, I'll jump into my Angie question. Um, I don't Angie's, feel like I answered your last question. Sorry. Um, what did you think of the story? Sorry. I'm, like, I in mean, general. I mean, this isn't my genre, but I thought it was well written. Mm-hmm. Um, I, comparatively to The Bone Garden, which we read last year, which is also true crime, and compared to um, one we read recently, which is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. To murder. Yeah. Um, and, well... I don't want to give away anything that we're doing next month yet, but um, comparatively, I would say the thing you're reading now. Yeah. Comparatively, I would say the bone garden is still better. Um, Yeah. But I, that's actually my first true crime novel, but I think this was better than a good girl's guide to murder. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason she's, like a gazillion times sold on this, and like yeah, she's like times bestseller, way famous. seventy times. But she shares our videos. I know every I was going to say that too. Like I don't know if she's running. We appreciate you, Karen. I know. I don't know if she's... I think she runs her own. I think well, she runs her own. I mean, that is super kind of her to share our little. Well, she pod. shares everybody. She shares everybody that mentions her. I think. Well, I think that it's is so sweet. nice. I think that's so I mean, nice because she, she appreciates her fans. I think she that's does. so nice. I can't get John Green to do anything. <laughs> I know. What the fuck, dude? I mean, we can't really trust him right now after Astonishing Color. Like, um... You shut your mouth. <laughs> I, I... I'm... He's on probation with me. That's all I'm saying. Um, I'm gonna shut my mouth, though. <laughs> Angie is a piece of work. Hmm. This girl has had just as rough of a path as well. Yeah, rougher in and some ways. Her kind of use, she uses it as steam to get through life. Instead mm-hmm. of like, Will, pushing it down, putting it away, that's life, whatever, moving on. She uses it to fuel her fire, right? Her mom's in a coma from drugs. She was put in the system at 11. She was raped and fucked and, you know, a every which way from everybody that could get their hands on her. Even before she, she was in foster care, she was. Right. I mean, the man, boyfriends. her mom's boyfriend that found her and her dead or nearly dead mom assaulted Raped her, her before he called before an ambulance. Called 911. Yeah. He says, you're not going to tell anybody about this. It's disgusting. Her mom used to sell her for drugs too. Mm-hmm. When she was little, it's nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think of her one as being like a counterbalance to Will mm-hmm. as Will's wife? And two, what do you think about her character and like her character path in this book? They weren't married. They're married. They've been married for years. What? They talk about it in the book a lot. I thought it was that they just were together on and off for years. No, and they're they married lived together. Oh. They've been married for two years oh. at this point in this book. I don't remember them being married. And okay, she but... left him for six months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I really feel bad for Will because of that toxic relationship. But Angie doesn't know how to love herself. Girl needs therapy. Wait, is that her? Is that her name or is that her prostitute name? No, Robin's her prostitute. Robin's her prostitute name. Like. I She's don't... an undercover cop, by the way, for those just listening and not reading the book with us. She's a cop, too. She's also a cop. She's not a prostitute and Will's I... married to a prostitute. Right. He's a cop and she's a cop. She just is an undercover cop for the sex trafficking and prostitute. Yeah, vice. Catching. Um, yeah. I, That's it. I don't, I don't believe her as a cop. I don't believe her as a partner for Will. Um 
I think she is She's just as skeezy as her. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, and she makes some really poor decisions, like really poor decisions. But in this spoiler book. Spoiler alert, she never stops. <laughs> I'm not surprised. But in this book, if it weren't for some of the poor decisions she makes, like going to Michael's wife, Michael probably would have never been found out. No. And like, she believed John. Mm-hmm. You know, like she was really, truly believed John, even when, you know, I mean, John didn't know she was a cop. He thought she was a prostitute, but mm-hmm. she saw the good in him. She saw mm-hmm. the kid, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. so. But the fact that Will thinks that they've slept together. Yeah, but I mean, and just sleeps with everybody. It's like I, a thing she does. I don't remember them being married. Are you sure they were married in this yeah, book? Okay. They are. I they just are. remember them living together and then like they had been together for seven years. They and, are. Like... Because he has to file a divorce for divorce in like the third or fourth book. Mm. So that's a whole thing. Does he actually divorce her? divorce her? Yeah. Yeah, he does. But she's still in he all does. the books? Yeah. Because, well, she... Okay, spoilers for the series. <laughs> um, he ends up meeting a doctor, a coroner. They kind of get into each other they start sleeping together you know he keeps the dog she has um dobermans and she's been through like her husband died on duty so she doesn't date cops but then she ends up dating will you know that cliche of course and um her and will start like getting really comfortable they're at each other's places all the time and then angie would just start showing up Mm -hmm. trying to like ruin it for them even though she's really like the she's She's but she also like they'll go into angie's sub story and Angie will be talking and talking about how she just left there. And she'll be like, I love her for him. He's She's great. I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, bitch knows she's crazy. Because she has. Bitch knows she's crazy. Psychotic episodes. <sighs> that, um, is, that kind of disappoints me that she, that Karen wrote such a cliche later. Because this book does, that's one thing I have to say about this book. There are not cliches in it. Mm-hmm. And, she's, and there are sometimes that cliches She work. avoids it. She there, avoids it, there, but she's pretty good at yeah. And she's there pretty are, good at sneaking them in, though. There are sometimes that cliches work that, like, mm-hmm. you know, the one bed trope, the uh, fake dating. Like, we know what to expect from those, and and they work almost every time. But like, she did not put she did not put cliches cliches in this book. I don't know. Kendra's got me questioning my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to talk to her about it next week. <laughs> You're a little bit um, further than me, so no more spoilers. Molly no spoiled a book for me today. Like we, I didn't do it on purpose. We, I really thought you were ahead of me. We, You're usually ahead of me. We spoil books every week for people on this pod, but I'm still kind of bitter that you spoiled it for me. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I, was, I swear to God I didn't. I was two chapters behind you. <laughs> Which never happens. I know. I'm it. always behind. <laughs> But I'm on a seven days stretch. <sighs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. But my... The main storyline in this book is about three gruesome murders of young girls. Mm-hmm. The slowly, the story slowly unfolds, and we see how these are all connected. What did you think about this story as the main plot point? Did you like the way the author unfolded it slowly? Yeah, because initially, well, so there's four murders, right? So there's the girl mm-hmm. from that John's convicted of murdering. Yep. There's the two girls that um, Will brings to Michael to say, I think, right. no, no, there's there's five. They're still alive. Yeah, there, because there's, there's two three that girls. are still alive. Right, right. And one of those three girls was actually 10. And Will's pretty certain that that's an outlier that's more likely that she bit her own tongue. Tongue during um, the thing. But. But, but the big thing is that all of them have their tongues bitten off. Yeah. And John is convicted because they find the knife that cut off the girl's tongue but it's never he's never actually like the evidence is never revealed to him that the coroner said it doesn't look like it was cut cut it was bit and and then then the sorry go ahead and the other girl that's murdered is the michael's lover from across the street the teenager and john and that was an accident 
Yeah, and John cuts her tongue out. But that one was an accident, and, yeah. Which is amazing mirroring, okay? Mm-hmm. So, spoiler, Woody is mm-hmm. Michael. Michael mm-hmm. is the one that killed the girl and framed John. His, his cousin, yeah. His mom was actually the lawyer who covered John in the Mm -hmm. murder trial and hid the evidence about the teeth marks. Mm -hmm. Because if she would have used the evidence about the teeth marks on the teeth, she would have gotten John free and they would have seen that it was her son. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want him to testify because she told John that it would be worse for him if her, if if he did. And um, then that Mm -hmm. scene in which John, John talks about her coming and saying that like, she had exhausted all the appeals possible and she's just like crying. And he felt like he was um, consoling her. her. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That was because she knows that what she did was wrong. Fucked up. Yeah. She knows that she used her power for evil. Mm -hmm. She knew. I mean, and she was a psycho for a son. Yeah. Yeah. She knew. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it then. Um, Our villain bad guy is Michael Ornwood. Mm -hmm. Woody. He is a detective for Atlanta PD. Um, He has a high solve rate. Mm -hmm. A really high solve rate. And I have questions about that and it makes me question if he was committing some of the murders and framing people, but that's beside the point. On the outside, this guy makes it look like he went from troubled teen to good cop. Mm -hmm. Joined the military, his life got straight, right? Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. He, He claimed that he got shot by a private and he came home because of it but there's evidence later that he shot himself he shot himself it was a self-inflicted wound because he was scared he was gonna get hurt he's batshit crazy and he's, he's a coward he, he met his wife when she was still a teenager yeah um, got her pregnant at 16 when he was in his mid-20s mm-hmm. and they got married Ugh. that's gross by the way that is gross if you do not think you, 25-year-old mister, getting a 16-year-old pregnant and marrying her isn't gross, you're part of the problem. She's a child. Yeah. She's a child. Yeah. Anyways. Um, um, so, he, I, I mean, he beats his wife. He, he yeah. his son, like, his son has some pretty severe disability. Mental learning. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, uh, what is the proper term now? Um, cognitive delays. Yes. He has some pretty yes. severe cognitive delays. Um, mm-hmm. That was another thing that bothered me about this book. The amount of times that they used the R word was yeah. a lot. It, it was rough. Um, I know Karen has made a statement about it. If I can find it, I'll post it. It was like she was saying that she wrote this in the 90s and it was still like commonplace and she didn't mean to ever offend anybody that kind of thing well john green has done that too one of his one of his books he uses the r word and he's walked that back as well listen i'm not i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say it was okay because she wrote it in the 90s and there no the the fact is that even if she wrote it it's a nasty word even if she wrote it today that is 100 percent the word that the character that said it would use yeah and it so is. that's like To Kill a Mockingbird is my all time favorite book. When we're filming this, it's actually Banned Books Week. We read that we read To Kill a Mockingbird last year for Banned Books Week, and that book is consistently banned because of the use of the N word. And I, I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to be offended by that word. That's why she because used it's it. A bad word. Yeah. That's why she used it. That's why the characters yeah. who do it they refer to them as trash. Like right. that's why they are trash human right. beings. So I do feel like even if um, this book was written today, the character of Michael would still use that word to just find his yeah. son. He would absolutely because he's that's how he sees him. He sees him as lesser. Being. He sees him as lesser. He's a gross a human being. Like he gross. is just really gross, really gross, gross. And his mom's no better. In the end, spoiler alert: John and his sister go to confront her. Mm-hmm. To get her to admit to what she's done, mm-hmm. and she won't like she denies it, and like mm-hmm. they threaten to take give her charges, the whole mm-hmm. thing, and she denies, denies, denies. I mean, what would you have done in that situation? Because I would have just pressed charges. I wouldn't even gone to my aunt. I wouldn't not, have gone to her. Lie. I wouldn't have. Gone I wouldn't have her. gone to her. She I would have sued her for fucking all of she her what she had. Yeah, she ruined that entire family's lives. Like his parents got divorced, 
his mom because she was because she was protecting her son Mm -hmm. Uh, who and her his dad was basically his dad went to see him after he was pretty badly raped and beaten yeah and his dad basically was like you deserve this yeah and um his mom fought crying you deserved this that's yeah. exactly what he said to right. him in the infirmary right that's his gross. mom had spent years and years trying to get him out of jail with his all this research mother. and then she had cancer and then died an early death from cancer and which his dad released. blamed yeah right two after. days after she died mm-hmm. and his, his dad blamed his, the death on on him of course and the and sister, his poor sister yeah she didn't believe he, him either she you know she yeah believed that he was guilty and, right because she and, believed what her dad said yeah and so the aunt ruined their lives and john one of the interesting things about this character robin who's actually angie when she's mm-hmm. prostitute um undercover um john <clears throat> starts thinking of her in like a sexual way yeah. but he doesn't ever make a move towards paying her and like buying a prostitute or whatever but we actually find out through that sequence of events that he's never actually had sex with a woman he's a virgin i mean he's a right in his mind he's a virgin right and uh he's never he's gonna like, need therapy right the, like, the the first girl that's killed that he's convicted of raping and murdering he kissed her and that was it he's yeah. had one kiss that one he kiss. chose for himself ever in his life his, i mean his story i mean he's okay so that was our next question actually let's continue talking about john shelley mm-hmm. he became the fall guy for his cousin i mm-hmm. mean what did you think of his story and how it unfolded i mean i mean it was really well written like well he's written. A, he's a character that like he's a likable character you so i liked likeable. him as a felon i liked him as a felon and what it was was he stunt was it yeah yeah was that the guy's name the mm-hmm. guy that talks in Ray Ray. Doubles. The guy's name was Ray Ray. Ray Ray. Ray, Ray. He Ray, repeats Ray. himself, yeah. Ray Ray. He says his name twice. Mm-hmm. Um, he, Ray Ray assaults a prostitute hanging out at the car wash. Mm-hmm. And John, in a flash, is on Ray Ray and just buckles his face in, right? right. Like, he just right. beats him real quick right. and helps the prostitute. Right. And he doesn't even know why he did it, right? Like, he's always been good. You know, and he, but he's also an unreliable narrator. None of the narrators in this book, maybe Will, are even Will. Re- reliable. Like, John, you think that um, that he's motivated by these things because he's a hardened criminal. Yeah. And he's admitted that he did this crime so he could get out of jail, right? Just so he could be see his mom. Right. That's the only reason he did it. Um, and instead we actually find out he's like a legitimately good guy. He had a crush on this girl and And he's had a crush on her forever, forever. And his cousin Woody couldn't handle that. The girl picked him. Woody had a lot of beef with him, Mm -hmm. right? He had this, like, come to find out Woody had this picture book, this scrapbook full of John obsessed with john Mm -hmm. he was mad that his stepdad liked john more he was mad that the girls liked him more he was just you know what in woody's mind john had the perfect life Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was going to take out the fact that he didn't have the life john had on john right right it's like beating someone up for not like having red hair and you want red hair like it, it is the stupidest reasonings um so what did you think of how this book ended angie kills the bad guy her and little girl are saved by will john goes and confronts his aunt i mean what did you think i mean it's a resolution but it's not a resolution i like i like that the little girl wasn't dead i was really like legit concerned she died i don't like that angie killed woody i wanted woody to be prosecuted put in jail and have everything coming to him that john endured for years yeah um i think she killed him because he raped her and i think that was just her rage coming out and if anybody else and i think if anybody else was in that room we would have seen rage angie just going at it i mean yeah and i mean blame her i mean he he kidnapped her he broke her arm he he just beat the hell out of her right and Like, like just so 
people, if you haven't read this book, when Molly says that he raped her, we don't actually find out that Woody raped Angie until much later in the book. We think that they had sex. That they consensual sex. She's right. like, because she was sore and she woke up in her car and she, she knew thought she it was with him. She thought maybe it was rougher, but it wasn't like right. Like, and she's like, I didn't need that drink. I would just go to sleep with him anyway. Mm-hmm. I would have done whatever he wanted. It mm-hmm. wasn't a big deal. But she said he did. She had a bruise where he bit her. Mm-hmm. So he did contemplate assaulting her and doing to her what he did to the others. Right. And then um, it, it basically occurs to her as the story goes on that like she probably was actually raped, that she was yeah. not awake or able to give consent when yeah. he, and when he yeah. raped her. Um, so we've talked about the ending. Did you like it? Um, the ending? Yeah. I just don't feel like it was the best resolution for the book, but it was a resolution. Right. Like I right. wanted John to get to sue the state and get all this money. And, um, I mean, honestly, it's not the state's fault. Uh, it's his fault. Well, that's not true because they didn't look for any other, yeah. um, they didn't look for any other suspects. As soon as they had him, they assumed it was him. That's Mm -hmm. true. Mm Mm-hmm. That's true. And a Um, lot of that had to do with the fact that the girl who was murdered, her dad was a prosecuting attorney. mm -hmm. So that didn't help. Right. At all. Right. Um, at, so this character, Will Trent Mm -hmm. has now been booked as a TV show. Oh, really? Hmm. He's been picked up for a full series. They've cast it. I'll put in the, the doobly doos, the um, shit down in the below, you know, where we put the things, uh, the links to that. Um, but I think they're releasing it mid season. They're not planning to release it fall. I think they're like going to use winter break or like, mm-hmm. you know, how they throw them in yeah. January, right? Isn't that usually yeah. what their mid season is? Yeah. Um, but. They don't even have a name for it yet. It's I mean, usually called Will Trent show. Usually. So do you think you'll watch it? Um, I maybe, maybe the, a lot of shows I like are just not on the air anymore. So I may, um, but usually a network puts a show mid season when they don't have a lot of confidence in it. But then again, scandal and Grey's Anatomy were mid season shows and both of them were spectacular. I mean, this is ABC mm-hmm. and they have, they have, um, if I was reading correctly, it is a good writer. Uh, they have cast a face like people know for Will Trent. I I think they just don't have their ducks in a row. Yeah. I think that's what it is right now. Because well, I think they're still casting. Yeah. Well, I think that um, maybe I will. I, I realized last year I watch entirely too many doctor shows. Because I watch The Good Doctor, The Resident. I gave up on The Resident because literally, look, listen, I was watching it for um, the guy from Gilmore Girls, Matt, mm-hmm. however um, the fuck you say his last yeah. name. Logan. Yeah. Logan. But, which is, by the way, I'm Team Logan. That's who she should have ended up with. I don't care. Um, but he straight up checks somebody's heart without even putting the things in his ears. So I had to give up on that show because Jesus criminies. So, um, so I watch, I watch the good doctor. I watch, uh, new Amsterdam. I watch Grey's Anatomy. Um, I watch Grey's uh, an obligation watch now though. Yeah. It truly gotta is. See it, through. it truly is. Um, I watch, I, I said, I used to watch the resident. I, uh, watch uh 911 which is still sort of a medical show and i, I watch did, both and i watch and lone star star i don't really love yeah. lone star but i still watch it <laughs> it's a little it's bit really cheesier. Cheesy. Yeah. yeah but it's but it has cheesy. rob Lowe. like it has, has rob, rob Lowe. Lowe. and it's zoe you know how much i love my zozo i know, I know you do um, um so i don't know if i'll watch it because I haven't been watching crime shows, I kind of eliminated those. I used to love the show Law and Order SVU. It was my favorite show. Um, I Detective Olivia Benson was like amazing. Like I watched that mm-hmm. show religiously through college and into my adulthood. But after I had kids, I couldn't watch the show anymore. No, it's rough. It is hard. I um, I'm trying to think what's out right now that I've 
like I'm like consistently watching. I binged New Amsterdam over the summer. I do I like, like that, that show. show, but it's so cheesy. It's so cheesy. Um, I like New Amsterdam. Um, Chicago Fire. I don't watch all the Chicago's, just Chicago Fire. I started I don't know watching why. Chicago Fire and I stopped after like the third season. I like Chicago <laughs> Fire. It's because I have a huge crush on What's His Face that played Steve in Sex in the City. Like I've, I've, I've always. Never, I've never seen any of, I've never seen a single episode of Sex in the City. What? Never? Never. 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 I've never. I'm, gonna, I'm texting Katie. I'm texting Katie when you, we're done. I can't believe that. I've never. Well, I didn't have HBO growing up. So I it was on TBS for a long time. Like the edited version. Why would I want to yeah. watch that? <laughs> because it's something is better than nothing. That was I, my mantra at 12. <laughs> why were you watching it at 12? But no. Like, because I was alone. <laughs> Tom and, I, Tom and I watched Big Bang Theory, which that's no longer yeah. on. That, you know, is over. We like Resident Alien. Um, but I we, love Resident we Alien. Haven't Again, seen, we, haven't, fly. we haven't seen any of the second half of this most recent season. season? Yeah. No, I haven't either. Oh, The Rookie. I like The Rookie. And they have a spin-off I stopped of watching that. I stopped watching that. You stopped watching a Nathan Fillion show? Yeah, I'm over it. The show, it's not Nathan. terrible. It's terrible. It's Every terrible. single episode, somebody he looks so their tired. Every, he looks so tired. Every single big. episode, they fire their guns, and most cops do not discharge their weapon, like no. ever. Ever. It, <sighs> okay, 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 we're on a tangent. <laughs> um, TV show, good. Okay, what was your good read? Oh, you know what? I don't good know. read rating. Let and then me, we're done. Let me zone. check it up. Then let me. Matt is making chicken piccata, and it smells so damn good right now. Oh, I cannot wait to go eat. I do not like chicken piccata. I don't like the capers. I eat around that's, them. That's see, but... that's what I don't like about it. I don't like capers. I eat around them, but that's I like the whole the flavor. fucking point is the capers. No, the lemon juice and the vinegary, and mm, I just don't eat the little green things. They tweak me out. Wow, um, I was really harsh on this because I gave yeah, it. Yeah, I don't a, doubt that. I gave it a one out of five. <gasps> April, yeah. but I think I might have just persuaded myself in this episode to at least give it a one point five. Damn! Here is my official. Here is my official good read. Round up for my friendship. <laughs> give it a two at least. This is this is actually what I wrote. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> this book is filled with disturbing images that are unnecessary to the overall plot of the story. This is the first book in the Will Trent series and it isn't even the main character. I want to say something redeeming. So I guess I'll say that the way the story evolves is original. One out of five stars, but still not the worst book I read in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> that award still goes to the lost apothecary. <laughs> And remember, gang, a thousand followers equals a revisit. It's possible we'll get there. We're getting like, what do we have now? Two hundred something followers. I don't know. Um, RSS is weird. So RSS is twenty seven, but then Amazon showing more. Every, all the other platforms are showing us more. And yeah, I think it's about based on our numbers of downloads and the followers we have on all the platforms. I think we're at about a two hundred followers, which is kind of amazing because we've only we're been pretty doing stoked. Y'all are here. We yeah, love y'all. We've only been doing this like a little over a year. And for those of you that don't un, like know much about the podcasting world, or know us. Like, I don't know how you got here, but hi. Well, we're included in not knowing much about the podcasting world. We kind of decided to do this and we we're like, kind of like, okay, sure, let's do it. We didn't really Fuck do it. a lot of research into it beforehand. Maybe we should have, but pod podcasts don't, they don't make money unless you're famous. Like, it's really Lord. hard to. Or somebody famous takes you under their wings. Right. That's so Shepard, I'm looking at you. Hook a girl up. Armchair X umbrella is all I'm saying. So I'm not looking for a million like billion dollar deal like you did with Spotify, homie. I just need a little chingling. <laughs> so most podcasters are hobbyists, like we are. And um yeah. Facts. So if we can get a thousand followers, I will re record the motherfucking episode of Lost Spot. <laughs> <laughs> I secretly hope we get 999. <laughs> you you guys know what's going to happen. We're going to hit like 1001 and she's like she's going to go, 
I said a thousand. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'll do it. I'll just be really unhappy about it. <laughs> it that's my mantra. I'm going, but I'm going to complain the whole time. <laughs> mm, yeah. I right, do we want to talk about what's next week. Fine. All right. So next week we are meeting with, I cannot show you the cover because it's on my Kindle. Kindle. Hashtag not sponsor. I don't have it on my phone. But I'm I, hoping Tom will put it right here. put it in a chair. Right here. Because right here. this cover Wait, is Tom. so gorgeous. Wait till you hear um, how she got these covers. I know. So beautiful. She's going to tell, so, we're going to have her tell this story. It's so, so cool. Kendra is an independent author her books are available on Amazon. She also has a website. We will link all of that below. Please try to read her book. Support authors, support independent authors. Um, we're happy to do that here on our pod. Um, and guys, Molly and I are both reading it. It's really good. So this good. is the first book in the series. We're going to talk about it next week. The book is called Granted, and the series is called Granted. The fourth and final book in the series actually comes out in November. So we're going to talk to her about the first book, the series as a whole, and what we can expect from the fourth book. Go support her because this book, God, this right. book is so good. It's so good. It's so good. So um, it's got a love triangle, which I'm always here for. It's YA. It's it's magic. and a triangle or a diamond? Yeah, I don't know. It's got some extra like, points in there. But um, it's got magic in it. it. It's, it's got so many elements of things that are like that I love. But I, I'm but enjoying this book a lot. It's so unique. I need to see the map, though. I need to see the map and the, yeah. the things. I'm going to have to buy the physical books because this is so good. Well, and it's I just so wanted good. to say, Molly's listening to the audiobook of the first book. So the first two books do have audiobook versions available. So if you're an audiobook reader, like we are on the pod, get those two. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to Kendra having... did say she's working on getting the rest. It's just... Go buy the books and she'll work on it. Right. Um, and the rest of the month of October, we have posted to social media, but I will go through the list with you right now. Because I don't um, think I have any of those damn books. Well, I've already actually read most of them. I have Mary so. Shelley here. Um, I've actually read most of the books for next month already. So, um, oh, uh, so granted, I already said that. Uh we're on, that'll be on October 4th. October 11th, we will read The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk, which is, uh, C.L. Polk is actually like a really well-known um, fantasy yeah. writer. Mm -hmm. um, then we're going to read on the 18th, We Were Liars, which was my pick. Um, I read mm -hmm. it before and Molly has never read it. Um, on the 25th, we will read The Mary Shelley Club, which I am almost finished with um, now. And if you want more information about what's coming up, visit us on social media. And we have a website. Go check out our website. You can stream all of our episodes from the website or from our RSS page. Did I miss I, anything? Nope. We'll see you guys next time. That sounds good. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Book Besties. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The views discussed here are those of Molly and April, not those of anyone else. Today's book was Triptych by Karen Slaughter. Your book besties are Molly Biggs and April Watkins. Editing by Thomas Watkins and music is Sleep Sweetly by Brigida. Don't forget to follow the book besties on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. If you'd like to contact the book besties, please email us at bookbestiespod or you can visit our website, bookbestiespodcast.com.